Good evening, Masterminders, and happy Black History Month. Thank you for allowing me to present more examples of how history is as valued today as yesterday, to inspire and inform, to instruct and identify ourselves with greatness by keeping hope alive with history. Every generation comes equipped with its own challenges that are different from the last. The answers are relevant regardless of the era that we live in. Knowing how to overcome is a state of mind and claiming the wisdom of success. Draw inspiration and wisdom from the stories of four hair care divas. Note what they did that will inspire your Yes, I can, too, confidence. Rose Meta Morgan was born in Shelby, Mississippi, in 1912. As a child, she felt unattractive and somewhat homely, but she had a loving father who praised everything I did, so I worked as hard as I could to please him. By age 11, Rose began to show an affinity for hairstyling, and by 14, she was earning money doing hair. Later in life, she said, quote, I know the beauty field is important. I was a high school dropout, and the beauty industry gave me an opportunity to prove that I could go as far as those who had been to college. Rose found her way to Chicago and studied at the Morris School of Beauty, where she excelled. She had an innate ability to style, cut, and groom hair and was encouraged to progress in this area. Around 1926, she rented a booth in a neighborhood salon and began taking on customers full-time. Twelve years later, in 1938, she did the hair of singer-actress Ethel Waters. Waters was so pleased that she invited Rose to accompany her to New York City, traveling in her car. Young Rose Morgan saw the big city and was impressed. Quote, I saw tall buildings for the first time, end quote. In six months, she had enough clients to open a beauty shop. The business grew rapidly. She hired and trained five stylists and soon needed a bigger space. She found a rundown place that needed a lot of renovation. All the men I knew thought I was out of my mind, doomed to failure. But I'm in business where a woman has to take care of herself. I've never been afraid to take the next step, to take on responsibilities. The renovation cost $28,000 because Morgan insisted on the best. They installed the latest in hairdressing and health equipment. But within three years, the Rose Meta House of Beauty was touted as the biggest African-American beauty parlor in the world by Ebony Magazine in 1946. They served an average of 1,000 customers a week with a staff of 29 including a registered nurse, 20 hairstylists, and three licensed masseuse and a payroll of $40,000 a year. What did they offer customers? At her modern beauty salon, they had the latest hair care and hair styling, facials, manicures, eyebrow shaping, Swedish massage, body building exercise equipment, and steam machines. Morgan and her partner, Olivia Clark, created a line of black cosmetics. In 1955, Morgan opened a larger salon, the international style Rose Meta House of Beauty. This location offered the services noted before and added wig styling and repairs, a dressmaking department, and a charm school. It is estimated that the company's gross income was $300,000 and the company was valued at $3 million. Over time, she employed and trained over 3,000 people. And for a short time, she was married to Joe Lewis, the boxing champ and most famous black man in America. Introducing Business Titan, Madam Sarah Spencer Washington. This extraordinary black woman was honored as one of the most distinguished businesswomen in the country for her Apex Empire Beauty Company at the 1939 New York World's Fair. 
Yes, as America came out of the Great Depression. In fact, she had been celebrated for coining the saying, quote, Now is the time to plan your future by learning a depression-proof business. As long as there are women in the world, there will be beauty establishments, end of quote. Sarah was born in Beckley, West Virginia in 1889. She attended Norfolk Mission College in Virginia and later took advanced chemistry courses at Columbia University. Sarah is distinguished from other beauty industry divas because she was able to apply her knowledge of chemistry to create and patent products. In 1913, when her mother became ill, they moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey for her health. There, Sarah opened a one-room beauty shop. She did hair during the day and went door-to-door -door selling her products at night. By 1919, Sarah Washington had launched the Apex Empire. Her business model was to be in control of all aspects of the operation. Quote, if a job needs doing, do it. If you need a service, start a business to provide it, end quote. Her business was multifaceted, a factory to develop and manufacture products, beauty school to teach black women how to use and sell the products, a printing company for advertising and print needs. By the 1930s, the empire included Apex Beauty Products Company, Apex Publishing Company, Apex Laboratories, Apex Drug Store, and Apex Beauty Colleges. Apex Beauty Product Company and Laboratory manufactured and distributed over 75 products made from raw materials. Products included pressing oils, hot combs, hair pomades, perfumes, beauty creams, and lipsticks. They employed over 215 workers in the Atlantic City area, the largest black-owned business in New Jersey, and was one of the nation's largest black-owned manufacturing companies in the 1930s. Selling. Washington recruited agents to sell the Apex system. They were told that they could make between $60 and $90 per week. This was enticing because in the 1940s, the average annual income for a white American was $33 per week. According to a 1946 newspaper report, more than 45,000 agents were selling her products around the world. Beauty Colleges Washington trained students and provided income opportunities selling Apex products. Colleges were opened across the United States in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Richmond, Baltimore, and Newark. Washington even set up colleges in Cuba and Johannesburg, South Africa. Her colleges graduated about 4,000 students per year. Apex Drug Store The store was featured on a colorful postcard showing the impressive corner location, a classy brick building with Apex Community Drug Store in large letters above the glass storefront door. It displays a massive luncheonette area with black tables and red chairs and a long counter with red cushioned bar stools. The card highlights a modern pharmacy department. To be sure, the store had all the merchandise offerings of the day to be found at any drugstore. Apex Publishing Company produce Apex News monthly, sold for 15 cents a copy and popular around the country. It drew famed color celebrities like boxer Joe Lewis. What else did she invest in? Washington, like most black business persons, invested in her community and civil rights. In 1946, she bought an upscale hotel for $70,000 and created the first integrated beachfront facility at Atlantic City. Also in the 1940s, Washington founded the Apex Golf and Country Club. It featured a spa, a dance pavilion, and tennis court. To provide fresh produce for her drugstore, restaurant, and hotel, Washington had her own farm nearby in Egg Harbor, New Jersey. She also established the Apex Rest Home for Senior Citizen Care. 
Sarah Breedlove was born in Delta, Louisiana in 1867, just two years out of slavery, the last of six children, and she grew up poor in a dilapidated shanty house. She tells of this house when she talks about her defeat over poverty. Quote, I am a woman who came from the cotton fields of the South. I got my start by giving myself a start, End quote. She is perhaps the best-known black beauty product diva, Madam C.J. Walker. Orphaned at the age of seven, Sarah moved to Vicksburg, Mississippi, and lived with her sister and brother-in-law. There were problems in the home, and Sarah escaped by marrying an older man when she was just 14. Her only child, Lilia, was born when Sarah was 17. When her husband died, they moved to St. Louis, where three of her brothers lived. Sarah found work for a dollar fifty a day as a washwoman, was often homeless, and making a way out of near nothing for herself and her daughter. Looking for love and support, she married John Davis in the mid-1890s. He was abusive. The stress caused Sarah's hair to fall out. Looking for solutions, Sarah found Poro products manufactured in St. Louis by Annie Malone. Poro products were effective and Sarah became a Poro sales agent. Around this time, she met Charles Joseph Walker, a St. Louis newspaper man. Yes, C.J. Walker. In July 1905, at 37 years old, Sarah and her daughter moved to Denver, Colorado to sell Poro products. There, she developed her own line of hair care products. She married Walker in 1906 and became Madam C.J. Walker. Marketing the Walker Method using Madam Walker's wonderful hair grower resulted from traveling the southern and eastern states, the Caribbean and Latin America recruiting and training Walker agents. Nobody outworked the Madam. After closing the Denver business in 1907, they relocated temporarily to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where they opened a beauty parlor and their first college. Eventually, over 200 colleges would be established under the Walker banner. In 1910, they relocated to Indianapolis and to Anna to a thriving black middle class where the nation's largest inland manufacturing centers were. By August 1910, Madam had 950 sales agents and thousands of clients. In 1917, the company claimed to have trained nearly 20,000 women and eventually over 40,000 agents. Key to Walker's success, understanding the power of branding and advertising. With husband C.J. Walker and his knowledge of advertising, they devised winning marketing plans heavily focused on mail promotions and print advertising in black newspapers and magazines. Walker's name became household. In 1917, Walker organized sales agents into state and local clubs to become the National Beauty Cultures and Benevolent Association of Madam C.J. Walker agents. During the first convention, Walker gave prizes for top sales agent and most agents recruited. Lured to New York City by her daughter, Alelia, Walker opened shop in Harlem in 1916, leaving the Indianapolis business in competent hands. Madam C.J. Walker lived large. Her extravagant tastes and flashy public image exemplified well. She dressed in the latest fashions, wore expensive jewelry, drove fine motor cars, and dined at the best restaurant. She owned townhouses in New York and Indianapolis. In 1917, Walker Manufacturing Company's annual revenues were $500,000 and Walker's estate was worth an estimated $600,000, about $8 million in present-day dollars. In 1918, Walker moved into Villa Loaro, a Georgian design mansion that cost $250,000 to build with 20 rooms elegant gardens, a swimming pool, and a golden piano, along with a $60,000 pipe organ, a long way from the shanty of her birth. 
At her death in 1919, Walker was considered one of the wealthiest black women in America. She began at the age of 37 and died at 51. What could this woman have accomplished if she had started earlier or lived longer? Annie Turnbull Malone became the first black self-made female millionaire in America. She was worth over $14 million in 1924. In 1926, she paid over $40,000 in taxes alone. She was also one of the first in Missouri to own a Rolls Royce. Annie Malone was an entrepreneur and business innovator like few others. She believed in uplifting people. Saying that Malone started from nothing is an understatement. Annie was born in Metropolis, Illinois in 1869. Her parents were former slaves. She was the tenth of eleven children. When her parents died, Annie was very young and sent to live with her older sister in Peoria, Illinois. She was also a sickly child. She missed a lot of school and had to withdraw before completing high school. While a teenager, Annie noticed the fashion trends of the day, particularly hairstyles. In the 1890s, black women took a fancy to having straight hair. Women used harsh soaps, goose fat, heavy oils, butter, bacon grease, and lye mixed with potatoes to straighten hair. Unfortunately, these methods also took their hair out. Annie envisioned creating a hair straightening method that was effective and healthier for hair. She had an interest in chemistry and enlisted her aunt, who was an herbal doctor, to develop a product they named Wonderful Hair Grower in 1900. Annie was in her late 20s and was eager to run with the concept of a hair care line of products. And she did. After the first taste of success, as they say, the rest was history. She built an empire. In 1902, Annie Turnbow moved to St. Louis, Missouri because it had the fourth largest population of blacks in America. She continued to develop hair care products and taught others how to use them. She ventured into styling hair and cosmetology and named her technique the Poro Method. Demand exploded and she hired several sales assistants to help her sell plural products door to door long before the Avon lady came calling. As they developed more products, they moved from a modest building to a larger one. Demand for Poro products reached a level that required an even larger facility. In 1918, Annie Malone saw her dream materialize when she opened Poro College, a modern brick structure that took up an entire block, a college to teach cosmetology, business offices, laboratory to develop products, manufacturing operations, and distribution hub with a fleet of trucks. It was a community center with a 500-seat auditorium, meeting rooms, sewing department to make uniforms, dormitories, dining room, rooftop garden, hotel, gymnasium, bakery, chapel, and product store. Poro hired nearly 200 people at this facility. At the reception station in the lobby, people could buy stamps, money orders, and pay their city gas bill in the 1920s. Her operation is historic as the first mail-order business for cosmetic products. Poro College was the first educational institution in the United States dedicated to the study and teaching of black cosmetology. By 1927, there were Poro Colleges in 32 U.S. cities and abroad, reportedly graduating thousands of agents in North and South America, Africa, and the Philippines. It is estimated that Poro trained 75,000 women. In 1944, the National Beauty Culturist Lee declared Annie Malone the pioneer of the hair industry. Messages of Hope Messages of Determination and Overcoming From Rose Meta Morgan, Sarah Spencer Washington, Madam C.J. Walker, and Annie Malone 
telling us to find what we do well and don't look back. Believe in yourself and develop networks to succeed. Focus on uplifting others as you grow together. Nothing new in this. Love one another. <laughs>